Bill Gregory has come in for Jethro Pugh in the Cowboys front four. He's number 77, probably, for a pass rush on third and nine. Duhon! Inside the 20-yard line is Bobby Duhon. Well, hello! Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Grill. Before we get started, just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you! If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you! Well, the New York Giants. Um, I mean, today... Also, happy July 4th to everybody out there. Um, the rookies are showing up the 19th, so in 15 days, just a little over two weeks, the rookies will be showing up, okay, for training camp. And we're going to get this all, all the ball rolling, guys. And then I believe it's eight days later. I think that's when the veterans have to show up. I believe it's July 27th. So... Uh, between now and then, there's not a whole whale of a lot going on. As I keep saying, like all my videos, you know, uh, uh, sometimes no news is good news. I mean, because a lot of times if you hear something bad, you know, I'm sorry, if you hear something, it's something bad. So-and-so is playing a game of pickup basketball and he tore his ACL, he's good, you know what I mean, or, or, or this guy got hurt or that, you know I mean, there's not a lot, you know, that you really want to hear between now and then, especially because all, pretty much all the money's spent, you know, there's no trades going on, the Giants aren't really picking up anybody huge or anybody to make a big difference or anything like that, so it's, things are kind of quiet, so I keep scouring the, you know, um, the, the headlines, shall we say, and I, I saw, I, I saw an ad, um, or an article, shall I say, that I, I kind of piqued my interest, so I'm going to go over it. It's, it's very well written. Um, it is, let's see here, it's, it looks, it's by uh, Fan Nation Giants Country. Okay, I'll leave a link in the description box. Has the NFC East report card grading each team's off-season roster moves. Now, I'm, I'm not going to argue at all. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, you know, I can't really argue. Pretty much spot on. You know, a lot of, you know, this, I, I'm pretty much obviously more with the Giants. You know, so um, it, it also, you know, gives the, um, the the Eagles perspective, the Cowboys and what out with the Reds, uh, not the Redskins, I'm sorry, the Commanders. Um, the, the only thing that just just ticks me to frick off every time is, I guess I live in South Jersey. I'm about 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Every time just takes me off. I'll, I'll go over this more in depth and detail. Okay, is uh, the 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 grades that I, every time every time the Eagles get is like an A every time, and I just I just can't I, I just can't freaking stand it. Absolutely cannot freaking stand it. Uh, you know, it doesn't. If they pick me in the draft, they would get an A. It's just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So. Um, so I'm going to go over this article. As I said, I'll leave a link in the description box. You can check it out. It's a pretty good article. All right, so let's uh, let's take a deep dive, shall we, into this article. All right, the New York Giants. I got um, this article here. It's um, up here from Fan Nation, uh, Giants Country, Giants Country Home. So I'll leave a link in the description box. Nice, nice little article. It has um, the NFC East report card grading each team's off-season roster moves. All right. And I think they did a very, very good job over here. All right. What do we got? The New York Giants, the Washington Commanders. Okay. I got to get used. I'm, I'm so used to saying the Redskins and the Washington football team. Uh, it's going to take me a little while to start saying the Commanders. But Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys all underwent significant changes in the offseason to improve their respective rosters. <laughs> Uh, the Giants, the new general manager, Joe Shane, did the best he could to make lemonade, yes he did, out of lemons after inheriting a dire salary cap situation. While they, the, uh, he added several new pieces for the future, there's still much change on the immediate horizon, especially considering a lot of free agent veterans Shane brought in and are on one-year deal. So, I mean, yeah, we got the roster, you know, now, but uh, what the just said. I mean, a lot of them are going to be here today and <laughs> gone next year. So, but I mean, 
slowly build a roster, hopefully through the draft, which is something the Giants just just don't want to seem to do over the past 10, 15 years or so, especially sign, re-sign their draft picks. I mean, for some reason, but if we start drafting correctly, start building the guys, bringing the guys in, we want to build a team around uh, after the contract's up, actually pay them, keep them on the roster, bring in a few, a free agent here or there to add in, fill in where we need it, you know, build the roster that way. I think the Giants are off to a pretty good start, all right? So as a result, and this is extremely fair, I, I'm not going to argue with this one bit. One, I, we had a you know first the, the two rounders, Thibodeau and Neal, and then, you know we got a bunch of other guys are really really excited about seeing. I'm not going to say uh, Wondell Robinson's going to be the you know the the best wide receiver in football, or I'm not going to say you know what I mean I'm very excited about the first two round the first uh, the, the two first round picks that we got. Uh, I said the rest of the round, I'm very anxious to see what they might wind up doing. Hopefully, you know, um, they, you know, all the guys pan out, probably not going to happen. But hopefully, if we, you know, out of all of our draft picks, if we can get an additional three or four more guys that we can, you know, re-sign and help build the roster with, that will be off to a really good start. I said, but then next year we're going to have some salary cap money. We can maybe bring in a few uh, uh, seasoned veterans to fill in a couple holes that we have or I can keep building through the draft here. You know, the Giants did a very good job because they, had, they were strapped for cash this year. There was only so much they could do. So, as a result, the Giants received a B-minus for their offseason. Not going to argue with that at all. The good news, though, is that things are looking up for the Giants, as noted in the review below. All right, so they start off with the Giants here. All right, let's run down what each team in the NFC East did this offseason, getting the load down direct from each team's publisher. And be sure to check out the video above to hear from the NFC East team publishers regarding one move they like most and one they like least is uh, made by the respective teams. So there's a video at the top here. There's four people. They go over each right here. They talk about four. It's about four minutes, right? Uh, so that they, they talk about, you know, what they like about their roster moves and all that. But they start off with the Giants here, okay? All right. And we got... Um, Key additions, obviously Kayvon and um, Evan Neal. Daniel Bellinger, I'm very excited to see what he can do. Uh, John Felician, I mean, there's, there's a bunch. I mean, you know, I don't know if they put Bellinger in there. Why didn't add Wandale Robinson in there? They got, you know, Feliciano in there. Okay, I'm not sure, you know, but they got Kolowinski in there. You know what I mean? So, right, I mean, you know, they, they could have put a bunch of guys in here, but, you know, they – these are the five guys that they added in there. But we, we had some losses, though, okay? We got the Austin Johnson. I was sh shame to see him go. Uh, Logan Ryan, because he's aging money-wise. He's not in the long solution for the Giants. So they just, yeah. <sighs> Let him go this year. So, uh, Evan Ingram and uh, Keen, Keen Crossan. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I don't know. I don't have James Bradbury in here. But yeah, he's a loss. You know, they didn't necessarily lose him. That maybe free agency or whatever, but they they did. He's not on the roster anymore. They couldn't afford to keep him. So I mean, you know, he, he's on there as well too. But well, season great. B minus. The new GM Joe Shane was significantly hamstrung thanks to prior regime's bold yet unsuccessful gamble to stretch the salary cap to acquire veteran help. Shane did stockpile draft picks filling them with prospects that addressed numerous holes on the rosters. He also weeded out veterans such as Ryan, who were no longer in the team's long-term plans to straighten out the cap moving forward. It's going to take time for everything to come together. But the early feelings are that Shane and head coach Brian Dable have a long-term vision similar to how the Bills, their former team, were built from the bottom up. So that's very, very, that's very good. To, very good to hear. You like, you like hear him, uh, you know, talking that way, right? Biggest question still to be answered. Can Dable and Shane save Daniel Jones? We're going to find out in a couple months. Um, let's say that he's dry for it. So, you know, a little over two months. We're going to, it's going to be a show time for Mr. Daniel Jones. After co-owner John Mara admitted the previous regime did everything possible to screw up Jones, Shane and Dable have done everything possible to reinforce what's around him to give him the best possible chance of success. That includes a system that Jones himself also contributed to developing, which is huge. A better offensive line and the freedom to return to his rookie season 
gunslinging ways. I mean, he, he had a lot of turnovers. Yes, he did. Uh, is he more conscious of that? I think he'll do a better job of that. Absolutely, that is rookie season. But let's not forget, he's 24 and 12. 24 TDs and 12 interceptions is rookie season. I'll take that. I mean, if, if at the end of the season you say Daniel Jones is 24 and 12, I'm like, all right, I'll take that. All right, so uh, let's see. But can Jones take the long-awaited step forward and be the quarterback the organization has always envisioned him and becoming? It's tough, tough, toughest position in all sports. If he can, he'll land a nice payday. Yes, he will. And the Giants will set uh, will be set moving forward. If he can't, the Giants are potentially looking at starting again with a new franchise quarterback in 2023. Patricia Trainer. She does a fantastic job. Very, very good. She's in the video above. And, uh, so when you, if you check the video out, she talks. She's doing. There's four people. Each one talks about a different team. Patricia Trainer talks about the Giants. Fantasy fact: In the first two seasons in the NFL, Saquon Barkley averaged 4.8 yards per rush and produced a combined 3,169 scrimmage yards in 29 games. In the last two seasons, he averaged a mere 3.5 yards per rush with a combined 950 scrimmage yards in just 15 games. So, Barkley is still going in the top three to four rounds in most fantasy drafts. Fabiano. As well he should. You know, and I, I think I think Dable and Shane, uh, well, not Shane, but Dable is going to get get a lot of, get some production out of him. Hopefully the guy can stay healthy. I hope. Because it's payday for him too. Right? Now, will it be a payday with the Giants or will it be a payday with somebody else? We'll have to wait and see. Now, this one's funny, the Dallas Cowboys. Key additions, Dalton Schultz, I mean, they really add him. They kept him. Yeah, they put a franchise tag on Now, with him, I'm always just kind of wondering, I mean, is he really good or is he just a product of the system? I mean, is he really good or is it because you got, you know, a good running game, nice offensive line, Dak Prescott, then you got, Wolves that last year, they had uh, ABCD Lamb, Amari Cooper, Gallup, Wilson out there riding running around wide as wide receivers, and, and that kind of, I don't know. But uh, Dalton, Mr. Schultz is it's getting paid. Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, uh, you know, free agency. Malik Hooker, uh, Durrance Armstrong, Michael Gallup, James Washington, uh J. Ron Curse and Tyler Smith. All right. Key losses. They lost Amari Cooper, Lael Collins, Connor Williams. Um, you know, they lost a couple of guys on the offensive line there. And another Cedric Wilson. So they lost two of their I mean they, they pretty much their their the four big ones were was Wilson. He was he was number four, I'd have to give him. As far as wide receivers. I mean, uh A B C D Lamb, Amari Cooper. Uh, Gallup, Michael Gallup, and uh, and Wilson. So, uh, so Mari Cooper was either number one or number two, and then they lost Wilson. So, oh, well, they lost a little firepower there. So, their off-season grade is a C. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with that. The theme of the Cowboys' off-season has been losing more players than they've gained. Key pieces from last season are gone from both sides of the ball, including Cooper and Collins on offense and Gregory on defense. So. Ooh, we got a lot, of, a lot of information here. The offensive line was bordering on questionable status last season with age and injuries catching up with long-time stable Tyron Smith. Yeah, he's he, he can be phenomenal, but he's a he's a walking injury waiting to happen. And the subpar performance of center Tyler Biotish. Um, and they actually they traded in front of the Giants to, to draft him. So. Dallas drafted Smith at number 24. I'll have to see how he pans out. But that's commonly regarded to be a stretch, which I, I, I kind of seemed to think it was. I mean, I didn't think he'd be, he was going to go in the top, maybe first round or so. But anyway, while it's possible Smith works out, the picks seem to be at reach. Dallas traded away Cooper and most of the receiving experience with him. It will rely on ABCD Lamb in just his third pro season to take over. Tolbert was taken in the third round, but if he can't contribute immediately, this team is in trouble. Michael Gallup won't, will not be available. So out of the top four, right, they lost Wilson, they lost Amari Cooper, and 
Michael Gallup, what they were saying, won't be available at the start of the season. So right in the beginning of the season, I don't know, like four guys from last year, three of them won't be there. Right? So. Biggest question still to be answered, can Dak Prescott stay healthy? Prescott started last season making an early case for MVP, and he suffered a calf injury while throwing a game-winning overtime touchdown to the Lamb against the Patriots. Prescott was never the same. Prescott seemed to be returned to his early 2021 form, and that will largely depend on the health and performance of the offensive line in front of him, which is also a big question. And fantasy fact. Zeke Elliott finished seventh in fantasy points among running backs last season. And, and he's now finished no worse than ninth at the position in every NFL season which he's played in the last 15 games, which, is, which he's played in at least 15 games. My bad. Still, his second half struggles and the emergency of Tony Pollard at Elliott's 2022 ADP in the third or fourth round. He could be a steal. Fabiano. All right, now we got, I guess they got the Eagles. I mean, this is the one I just, I just, I, I, I can't even talk sometimes, but I, I, I freaking absolutely can't. Ugh. Key additions: they traded for AJ a. Brown, Hassan Reddick, James Bradbury, uh, Kaiser White, Zach Pas Pascal, Jaquiski Tart, Jordan Davis. They got in, in, in the first round of the draft, and Nicobe Dean. They got him in the third round of the draft. Now the thing was, quote Nicobe Dean. A lot of people had him in the first round, maybe a top 10, maybe top 15 pick and all that. Area. Why did every team pass on the guy two times? And 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 I, about, he got like halfway through the second round. And everybody kept passing on him. There might be a reason why. So, okay. Key losses. Brandon Brooks retired. Rodney McLeod. Steve Nelson. Alex Singleton. Hassan Ridgeway. And Jannard Avery. Right. Off-season off grade. Everything, every time, I see anybody. I don't. I don't know if they're paying the Eagles. Eagles are paying these guys off. I don't know. Everything is an A, and I, I just, I, I just can't stand it. I mean, the, the team is just mediocre. They were what, like one game over five hundred last year. Uh, they they couldn't really beat any teams that had winning records. Or they, if, if that team had a losing record, they beat them. If the team had a winning record, pretty much they lost to them. So I mean, there's. Ugh. Everything they do is an A. Somewhat surprisingly, the Eagles went all in on challenging for a Super Bowl this year. And I don't even know if they even have a quarterback. You know? I mean, bulking up the defense and acquiring Brown, who's one of the top pass catchers in the game. He had 800 yards receiver last year. Let's give him $25 million. They could have gone the draft route, yep, which would have been a hell of a lot cheaper. Again, for another receiver to pair with Devontae Smith, yep, he would have had two young studs and waited for the development. Development. We have to wait seven years for the guys to develop. Come on, cut me a break. And wait, wait for development to happen, but decided to deal for Brown and dish out a hundred million dollars. I mean, God, uh, unbelievable. What we got here? Same thing on defense. The Eagles could have been content with putting a second-year cornerback such as Zach McPherson or Tay Gowan, opposite pro bowler Darius Slay, and living with the growing pains. Instead, they signed veteran cornerback Bradbury, who I don't think they'll be able to sign next year. They probably won't be able to afford him. So it's like they're pushing the chips in the, you know, you know they're going all in now. So if it blows up in their face, right? To give the Eagles a pair of potential shutdown corners. The addition of Reddick and the return of veteran Brandon Graham from a torn Achilles that cost him his 2021 season should help a pass rush that finished next to last in the league with just 29. Davis is also expected to grow into a three-down player and will be a key piece in the middle of the defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon's odd man fronts. Uh, we got here. Biggest question will still be answered. Will all the new pieces fit? And can second-year head coach Nick Sirianni, who has been handed a team that looks like it can contend on, contend on paper, be able to manage ex expectations which are off the charts in Philadelphia at the moment? Off the charts. With the expectation of right guard where Brooks retirement will open a battle to start between Isaac Sumalo and Jack Driscoll, the starting spots are mostly solidified, so Kent will be spent identifying depth behind the starters, especially at receiver, tight end, and linebacker. 
fantasy fact, in the first six weeks of last season, the Eagles offense ranked 10th in pass percentage and 23 in rush percentage. Over the la- final 11 games, however, they ranked dead last in pass percentage and were tops in the league in rush percentage. With the addition of Brown, fantasy fans have to hope the team uses a more balanced attack in 2022. Fabiano. Now, I, I said this is the, it just – now, this is the Eagles, right? They're, they're – Right, their uh, salary cap. I mean, their their quarterback is number 20, 21st down here, Jalen Hurts. Right, he's at one point nine. Right, so I mean, he's got a couple more years, and then and it's either they're going to pay him or whatever. I don't know, but there's a, ever a point in time where you know where they want want to pay this guy thirty to forty million dollars a year. They're going to lose a lot of players. And I said a lot of these other guys. I don't even know if they can even, you know, keep. A, I mean, like they got AJ Brown. Look at him. I mean, right now his his, his cap hits only eight million dollars, right? I mean, look, look, look at this. I mean, in a couple of years, right? Look, look what his cap hit is. Cap hit is uh, is about like eight million dollars. Then like eight million. Then, then he's twenty seven million dollars. Twenty two million. Thirty seven million dollars. <laughs> they got him signed for in twenty twenty six. I mean. So, so if you're going to jail him, Ertz, if, if he's the quarterback, you're going to sign him in 2026. You're going to have a a, a quarterback. You're going to be like 70, 75, maybe $80 million to over the cap for a wide receiver. And then if Devontae Smith wants to go, you're going to have like $110 million for two wide receivers and a quarterback. I mean, I mean, as I said, I'm Brad Barry, they're not, they won't be able to sign him after this year. I mean, just, just uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, let's see what we got. I mean, I mean, every every year, no matter what, with the Eagles, they they at people when they drafted Andre Dillard, somebody gave him an A for drafting Andre. He, he stinks, absolutely, totally stinks. They they said they t- uh, when it came to the Eagles at number pick number twenty two, they they took the best tackle available, so they got to give an A. They gave a uh, uh, oh, unbelievable. And um, <clears throat> Jalen Rager, I think they got they might have gave him an A for this draft too. They got all the draft picks. I think they gave him an A. He, I mean, are you kidding me? Um, Devontae Smith, good, good pick there. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with that at all. All right, uh, Jordan Davis, they got. I mean, you know, Nicobe Dean, they got him in the third round. Other teams passed on him. Eighty-two other people that passed on him before they. I mean, but my one here, this is the one here. They got an A. All right, in 2018, because I, I, I just, I, I think they got an A for Derek Barnett too, if I remember correctly. I mean, he's, he's, he's not that good. All right. He has since 27, he has 21 and a half sacks, right? I mean, cut me a break. But they traded out of the first round, okay, um, and uh, with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens moved up and took their spot. Let's see if I got it right here. Oh, here we go. All right. They took their spot. They traded up number 32. They took Lamar Jackson. Well, whoever was right, and I remember seeing an article, the Eagles got an A for their first round. And it was like, well, they they got an A because they traded out. So it doesn't matter. If they pick somebody, they get an A. I just can't stand it. If they trade out in the first round, they don't have a pick, they get an A. No matter what the Eagles do, they get an A. Absolutely can't stand it. Well, I mean, look, the, the Ravens traded up the Eagles, and they got Lamar Jackson. Well, right. Why don't we look back? Well, couldn't the Eagles use Lamar Jackson? I mean, how's their quarterback situation right now? They don't know if Jalen Hurts is the quarterback. They had Carson Wentz at the time. How's Carson Wentz doing, huh? Not too good, right? Don't you think they could have used Lamar Jackson? I mean, absolutely can't stand it. This is the Eagles here. So, uh, whatever, whoever wrote this article, I can't remember. This is uh, NFL.com. I mean, they're on the Eagle bandwagon. Everything the Eagles do. They took Jordan Davis, and they traded out of the first round. Uh, or they traded away their first round pick to get AJ Brown, right? And they drafted Jordan Davis, a defensive tackle, and they got an A plus. Their second day, so between Cam Jurgens and Nicobe Dean, who uh, who went eighty, could have gone in the first round, but who went all the way to number eighty three. Apparently, for some reason they got an A for that. No idea, absolutely no idea. The Eagles could have, right? The Eagles, let's see, what did they do? They traded here Tra- Traylon Burks, all right? This, right? 
This that's who the, that's who the Titans got. The, the Titans drafted a wide receiver with the with the pick. The Eagles could have also instead of drafting Jordan Davis, they could have traded up. They traded um, the Titans for AJ Brown. They gave him the first round pick here, and they traded they gave him a third round pick. Well, they could have took the third round pick instead of drafting Jordan Davis. They could have moved up here, right? They could have moved up to maybe to trade with the Jets, and they could have drafted one of the best. Well. Or maybe they could have gone up here, maybe drafted the best wide receiver. There are only a couple spots from the, the best, one of the best wide receivers. They could have Devontae Smith and another stud wide receiver. Would have cost them like $6 million a year. But no, you go out and spend $25 million on a year on a guy who got 800 yards receiving the year before. And they, and I said, then they could have, then they could have jumped up here with their third round pick, their first and their third. And drafted a wide receiver. Could have Devontae Smith and one of these stud four wide receivers right here. And then they still would have had their 18th overall pick. And they could have drafted, they could have drafted a, a, a cornerback instead of bringing in Bradbury. They could have a cornerback. They could have uh, drafted a Quay Walker. Where's who's the other? Where's Lloyd at? They could have de taken Devin Lloyd. I mean, they got a bunch of things. But because they went out of the way, they 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 they, they made the big splash, hundred million dollars. They, they they wound up getting an A out of it. I, I, it's just unbelievable. The AJ Brown, the the, the Eagles swap out that with the Titans. Let's see. So they they sent uh, the, the the they got uh, the eighteenth over the Titans got the eighteenth overall pick from the Eagles and a third rounder, and the Eagles got AJ Brown and they signed it to a hundred million dollars contract. You could have kept your, your two draft picks, right? Could have got yourself a real good wide receiver for about $6 million in the first round, okay? And instead of paying him $25 million a year, you could have got yourself a good wide receiver, Devontae Smith, and one of the other wide receivers for about $6 million and save yourself $19 million a year. And then you could have brought in another Another free agent for nineteen million dollars, <laughs> you know. I mean, you could have brought in some pretty good players for nineteen million dollars. Absolutely can't stand the Eagles. Absolutely can't stand them. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, every time, everything they do is an A. Absolutely, everything they do is an A. Well, where are the Super Bowls? Where are the Super Bowls at? What a joke! All right, they got the now we got the Washington Commanders. Key additions, Carson Wentz. <sighs> he was only with the the, uh, the Colts for one year. That sounded too good, guys, if you're a Washington Commander fan. Jahan Dotson, like a nice pick. Andrew Norwell and Trey Turner. Okay, so they did beef up the offense of the line. However, they did lose Brandon Sheriff. All right. The key loss is Ryan Fitz, the magic man. He retired. DeAndre Carter, wide receiver, and Landon Collins released. Off-season grade, B-. minus. Washington do, didn't do a whole lot with its off-season, opting for one large move rather than many small ones. With Wentz adding $28 million to the cap space, there wasn't a whole lot of wiggle room to make any more moves. While there were other potential quarterback upgrades to make this off-season, Washington opted to make an affordable one in terms of assets, trading two third-round picks for their new quarterback. I'll have to wait and say. It says one year to prove himself. If he doesn't, the commanders can tap into 2023's loaded quarterback class. Yes, they can. And possibly the Giants might be right there with them, too. So we'll have to wait and say. But the biggest question still to be answered, will the commanders sign a veteran linebacker? Ron Rivera has alluded numerous times this offseason about wanting to add a veteran linebacker. The team drafted Jamin Davis, very good, in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft but he has mitigated to his more natural position on the outside. Cole Holcomb has gotten a lion's share of the first team's reps, but it doesn't appear as if he's won the starting job. He'll have to do so in the training camp. Otherwise, the team may look outside the organization at a linebacker like Anthony Barr or Deion Jones. Fantasy fact, Antonio Gibson finished 10th of fantasy points among running backs last season, but he was terribly inconsistent. In fact, he scored a fewer than 12.7 times and was limited to single digits in six of those games. With J.D. McKissick in the mix and the selection of Brian Robinson in the draft, Gibson's 2022 touch share could decline. Fabiano. 
So apparently, according to this article, all right, the Giants were a B minus, the Washington Commanders were a B minus, and the Dallas Cowboys were a C. So three out of the four teams, well, I can't see it. I mean, I, if any of them, the Cowboys did, you know, probably a C is not very good. Um, a B, obviously, you could do a little bit better, but you could certainly do worse. So, I mean, between the Commanders and the Giants, I mean, the Commanders added $28 million with the, the bringing in of uh, Wentz. And apparently, they traded away a couple draft picks as well, too. So, they were a little strong caps, uh, you know, money strong right there. The Giants were straight up strong because their cap situation, they were pretty much screwed. So, for them to get a B minus, that's, that's, that's a good positive uh, thing. Totally disagree with the Eagles. I mean, I, 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 I'm not giving them an A. Sorry, not happening. I'll give them a B plus. I'm not giving them absolutely no. If you're going to start giving them an A every time they draft or have free agent pick up or whatever. I want to start seeing a bunch of Super Bowls on the, uh, in the trophy case, and they, they only got one out of 55 Super Bowls. So that's not happening. But I mean, next season with the Giants, uh, hopefully we'll build again through the draft. And they'll have some money to spend. So hopefully they can bring in some uh, seasoned veterans and start filling in some holes on the uh, on their roster. But all in all, I can't, you know, except for the Eagles grade, I can't, I can't really argue well, with uh, with this article at all, especially with the Giants getting a B minus. So you see, it, you know, I, I just, I just, I just, I, so I can't even talk sometimes when I just see the everybody grading the Eagles with an a. everything they do is an A. I mean, they won one Super Bowl. What are we at? Like 55 Super Bowls? They've won one Super Bowl. I mean, but everything, everything's an A. Everything. It doesn't matter who they draft. They draft somebody, it's an A. If they don't draft somebody, it's an A. They, it, I mean, they, they take guys in the first round. The, the, the one tackle a couple of years. He's not, I don't even know he's on a team anymore. That, that, I, he was an A. Uh, I mean, it, just, it, it, it doesn't matter. Everything they do. If they trade out of the first round and somebody else picks Lamar Jackson, right? You know, they get an A for that. It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I just, I can't, absolutely freaking can't stand it. Uh, I don't even think they, I don't even know if they even have a quarterback. The Eagles, you know, uh, going forward, Jalen Hurts seems like they're kind of pushing all the chips in the center just for like right now. You know, they have like, you know, they don't have much salary cap. And of course, you know, they have like $3 million in salary cap. I don't even know if they have a quarterback with Jalen Hurts. And, you know, they, they're getting an and I just can't stand it. Absolutely freaking can't stand it. But uh, with the Giants, I think it's pretty much spot on. They gave them a B minus, which you know, understandably so. I mean, there's not, it wasn't a lot they can do. Our boy, they had to, they had to jettison some, <laughs> some players to get under the salary cap so they can sign their draft picks. So that was that was huge, right? So a B minus is extremely fair. You know, I mean, if they had more money, I mean, if they had, I don't say. Fifty million dollars or so, and some sound, and they could report in maybe a couple more boomers, you know, a couple more heavy hitters, right? That B minus obviously might have turned into, you know, a B plus maybe, right? Somewhere around there, you know. But a B minus for the Giants, I think, is extremely fair. Um, going forward, okay, next season they're going to have a lot more money, so hopefully next season with another good draft and with some more salary cap money, all right, they can. Bring in a few more um, you know, seasoned veterans, shall we say, to really, really fill in the gaps that we need on the roster. And hopefully they'll turn that B minus maybe into a B plus, maybe even an A. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time any day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!